Hello, welcome to lesson 9 of my Erlang tutorial. In this lesson I will be talking about funds. What are funds and uh, what is higher order function in functional programming language? What is the functional language main property? Where funds are used? I will show some demo of the funds and uh, I will talk about list at a time operations from standard library, Erlang standard library like map or filter. So funds, of course, Erlang is functional language and one of properties of a functional language is that you can pass function as argument to other functions and that functions can return functions. Um, so functions are the basic unit of, uh, unit of abstraction in functional language and in Erlang, of course. Uh, functions that manipulate fu functions uh, are called higher order functions. Now, the data type which represents function in Erlang is fun. Fun. Um, now, of course, higher order functions is very important concept in functional programming because thanks to these uh, higher order functions, you can manipulate data types and functions. Now, uh, funds are used for uh, performing the same operation on a list. So this is uh, in Erlang called list at a time operation and standard library exports some functions, for example, map and filter. It's also used for uh, creating custom control abstraction. So as I mentioned many times, there is no such thing as loop statement for each for or something like this in Erlang, uh, it's defined also as a function. So you're using also funds uh, to to pass to this yeah, for each or something uh, the, the logic which should be executed within the loop. So I will show it in the next part of this video. And it's also used in parser for reentrant uh, uh, logic. Now, um, funds could be also known in other programming languages as uh, anonymous functions or sometimes also called lambda. So you may know it from, from in Java, for example, it's called lambda. Um, okay, so I will maybe go to the example. I will run Erlang tutorial, uh, Erlang shell, and I will maybe define one function. It will be function which <coughs> says hello, hello, uh, and the name. Then I uh, I will pass the name as a argument. So I'm writing fun, and then the argument which this function takes. And here I just want to type something like this. Okay, I want to say hello and then the, some string and then the new line <clears throat> and here I'm typing the name which will be passed here and uh, then I need to close this one and type end. So now uh, Erlang has defined the function and assigned it to greetings a variable. What happens if I will try to call this function? For example, like this. I get the result, hello Erlang. So this is the way to define anonymous function or the funds in Erlang. Yeah, I can also yeah, call it like this. I can also define other function, for example, filter. So again, I'm using this fun and my function is here to do some filtering. So for example, if X is greater than 10, it will return true. 
otherwise it will return false. And now I can def use this function, for example, I can pass 0, it returns false. I can pass 10, it returns false. If I pass, for example, 11, it will return true. So this is especially useful in the so-called least at the time operations. Not, uh, this is one, yeah, one of uh, usage. Um, so we have the uh, sometimes function which have a function as argument, and uh, this function is called on every um, every element of the list, for example. So Erlang standard library. Um, uh, the, the lists module provides a couple of functions like map and filter. So let me maybe define some scores uh, a list. There are some scores here, for example, 9, 20, 15, 99. Um, I have the scores list and now I have, uh, I want to execute on every element in this scores list, I want to execute some f function. So I can type something like this, fun x, and then I, I want to, for example, divide every element by 5. Uh, so it will basically, and here I need to write end to end this fun, um, and then type it like this, scores, and I get, uh, as a result, I will get the map which uh, with the divided values. Um, I can also use the function which I earlier defined, this filter, to filter out the results which are uh, gr greater than um, 10. It was defined here. So let me do it now. So I can pass, as you can see, function to other function. So here I type filter scores. Um, and it, okay, so the map will give me information whether it's true or not. So I get, of course, 10 is, is false, 11 is true, 9 is false, 20 is true, and then 15 is true, and 99 is true. So I could also use the filter to remove the elements or to, to keep only elements which are true and then I'm using filter a function from the standard library and then only remaining entries are 11, 20, 15 and 99. So this, these are the list at the time operations. The advantage of such operations is that the code is small and uh, does a lot uh, functionalities. So thanks to this kind of things, uh, you can write concise code. Uh, so the next part I will be discussing in next video will be the functions which also return fans um, and how to define uh, custom control abstractions like loops, uh, for, while and so on. So that's it for this video. Thanks for listening and have fun.